we have a magnetic license plate that's just sitting on the tire at this point that's so low downshift is up and the upshift is down which is the correct order oh man i feel like a rally driver what's up ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this pov review by auto top now my name is max and today we've got another viewer's car and we've got another mitsubishi lancer this time we've got the lancer rally art a car that has not been sold from new in the netherlands it was never released here but it is the car to fill the gap between the regular lancer and the lancer evolution the evo 10 so it's basically like your vw golf gti uh, ford focus st that kind of car. Uh, so today I'm going to show you around it, show you all the stuff that Arwin has done to it, uh, all the changes he has made. And after that, we'll take it for a drive towards the Autobahn for a little Autobahn blast. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to receive updates when we upload a new video. And check us out on Instagram if you like, at AutotopNL. Okay, so let's take a look at Arwin's 2010 Mitsubishi Lancer Rally Art. And well, we're going to focus on the changes, of course, because there are some very cool changes that Arwin has made. Uh, starting at the front, we've got this Maxton design front splitter. Um, you can see that it sits really, really low. It's like almost on the floor. It's like a couple of centimeters uh, because it also has air right and Together with that splitter, I mean, the fact that it sits so low with that splitter almost on the ground, it does look pretty cool. Uh, he also changed the headlights. So let's see if we can turn those on without the key. I don't think so, but yeah, we can. Uh, so he changed the he headlights as well uh, for some darker ones, which give the car a bit more of an aggressive look uh, he also installed this little air scoop here uh, it has a very cool bonnet with some vents and scoops um, he also painted the Mitsubishi logo in this green color that matches all the stickers around the car uh, we have a magnetic license plate uh, because there are some more vents behind here and he, i think he actually wants to start using them so i think this is like a temporary thing i don't know exactly uh, but it is pretty cool and if we move on we've got some really cool wheels as well that fit the car nicely 18 inch 235 section tire at the front michelin pilot sport 4s Cool. Uh, he upgraded the brakes as well. So this is a Saika big brake uh, upgrade, uh, which is really cool. I always love a big brake kit because it completely changes the, the way you can drive a car. Uh, if you have very good brakes, you can drive a car much harder and faster because you have more confidence in the car as well. Uh, a Maxton design side skirt as well. I mean, that is absolutely... <laughs> That's just sitting on the tire at this point. That's so low. Really crazy. 235, 40 tire at the rear as well. And we've got a custom stainless steel exhaust, a catback. Uh, so it is, uh, it still has a catalytic converter, but it does sound quite good, quite loud for a catback exhaust. So that's quite nice. And we've got a nice badge here as well so this is a lancer rally art uh but because i i guess because there are a lot of people who think it's an evo 10 he put this logo on there and then a line through it uh as a bit of a joke and of course because this car was never sold in the netherlands he uh, went to register it at uh, like the department of motor vehicles of the netherlands and he couldn't actually register it as a rally art, so he had to register it as an Evo, uh, which is pretty weird. So engine, we've got a two liter four cylinder turbo engine, uh, which is pretty stock. The only changes that were made is that it has the intercooler of an Evo and it has an HKS uh, blow off valve and some flexible tubing for the intercooler as well. 
Uh, this gives the car a little bit more horsepower. So stock it has 240 horsepower and 343 newton meters. I don't know the exact figure. It's about 10 horsepower more, I guess. Uh, but Arwen does have a bigger turbo at home. So uh, he is going to fit that on there. He has the turbo. It's going on here and we'll drive it again uh, when the bigger turbo is on there. And this engine is basically the same engine you find in an Evo, which has 295 horsepower. It just has a uh, smaller, this has a smaller turbo compared to the Evo. That's why it only has 240. Uh, the Evo intercooler is actually twice as big as the Rallyard intercooler. So that also does make quite a big difference, of course. All right. Um, so the air ride system, I can actually show you guys when we take a look inside. Because when you start it up, the system automatically lifts the car. Woo! That's very quick. It lifts up really quickly. Uh, it's very strange. So now, When we take a look outside, you can see that it sits much higher, especially at the front. It's much, much higher. And this is the way a car is supposed to look like. <laughs> it's, it, it's really low when it's uh, on its low setting. Anyway, on the interior, we've got some nice fake carbon basically trim uh, by Mitsubishi and we've got the twin clutch SSD gearbox with a changed uh, gear lever which is quite high and almost feels like a sequential gear lever uh, so we'll use that in a minute and see what that's like um, other than that we've got the steering wheel which is not adjustable in depth so you can get it towards you which is something that bothered me the first time I drove an Evo the, the seating position is really not uh, great especially not for tall Dutch people uh, I guess other than that it's quite basic uh, but it's totally fine so Arwin did upgrade his infotainment with his Android Auto thing uh, which looks pretty good actually it's quite nicely finished and quite a big screen it's like a tablet uh, which is nice. Uh, other than that, I don't think there are any interior upgrades. So let's take it for a drive and let's find out how this car compares to an Evo and well, to a tuned Evo basically um, and how it compares to like a VW Golf GTI or a Focus ST from this period. So put the gearbox in drive and to the side for manual. You can see that the downshift is up and the upshift is down, which is the correct order. We'll put the gearbox or the driving mode in sport plus or s sport super sport and off we go so this exhaust is actually valve controlled so we've got the valves open right now um, but if you want to hear what the difference is you can check out the acceleration video with a sound clip in there but the difference is really big so you've got a really nice daily driver sound like it's not intrusive it's not droning but when you want to and you open the valves you have this deep sound which is quite nice actually the drivetrain uh, the engine combined with this gearbox is pretty good I would say especially for this time this car is 10 years old now and uh, this is at the start of the dual clutch gearboxes this SST and I'll show you, when you were in S-Sport, the shifts are pretty quick and smooth. Response to the pedals is pretty good as well. We've got these massive pedals, uh, which are steering column mounted. So they are fixed. And we can also use this like sequential style big gear lever, which does give you the feeling that you're in a rally car, even though it's just an automatic thing and not a sequential. And another benefit of this gearbox is that it is really, it has really short ratios. So you're shifting a lot because the gears are really short and you're going through them like crazy. Uh, so that means that it is quite involving to drive it because you're constantly changing gears uh, when you're like cornering and stuff. Um, if you compare it to a VW Golf GTI or 
a Focus ST. It does feel very, very different. I would say that this is a lot more raw and a lot more involving. Um, in a good way and a bad way, the raw part. So it is a little bit raw and the engine as well when you really go to like 6,000 RPM. It doesn't sound like it likes it too much, but uh, I, I, I do like the fact that it is less polished than a VW Golf GTI, for instance. And of course, we've got all-wheel drive. So we've got a little button down here with all-wheel control, which controls the driving modes for the four-wheel drive system and the differential. So we've got tarmac, gravel and snow, which is pretty dedicated. Uh, it doesn't have the same full-blown system uh, you get in an Evo, which also has like your control and is much more advanced. This is like a basic version of that. It does have a center differential, but it's not as advanced as the one in an Evo. So here we go at the Ultraman, full throttle. So it's not like mind boggling fast. This is not really what this car is meant for. It isn't slow or anything, but you can really feel that at the top of the range, like at higher speeds, it has a smaller turbo compared to an Evo because it, it's a little bit out of breath and it doesn't really like this. It's more about that mid-range, that low end, uh, like gravel tracks and stuff like that. It's not about top speed on the Ultimate, of course, but hey, that's what we do. So we take every car uh, we can. I do have to say that air ride system is, it's not bad, it's quite comfortable, but sometimes it can be a little bit bumpy over bigger bumps so the return to level can be a little bit bumpy but overall the comfort is pretty good i can't actually see the speed oh this is 230 <laughs> you do need some space i think top speed is around 240 kilometers an hour but let's just call that top speed slope down a little bit use the sequential oh man I feel like a rally driver third gear fourth gear and we're getting overtaken by an alpha Giulietta oh yeah, it's not the fastest car at these higher speeds. It's just a really cool daily driver, which is so different from what we usually see in the Netherlands, which is something I really, really love. That's the thing I love most about driving you guys' cars, is that I get to see what you guys drive every day. And I love the fact that Arwen went for something else than, you know everyone else it's you don't really see these rally arts here you don't see lancers that much uh you hardly ever see an evo but i don't think i've ever seen a rally art uh, he also has the rear wing of an evo by the way i forgot to show you that but the rally art has a lower a smaller wing as standard and this is an evo wing so it's a bit it's a bit oh wow that's a big bump and you can really feel the air ride uh, but this wing is a little bit bigger so it has a, a bit more of an aggressive look at the rear but of course that big wing it doesn't really help with the drag uh, so the 100 to 200 time we measured at 22.08 is actually slower than a modern day VW Polo GTI with 200 horsepower so it's not a super fast car it's just it's just fun. I love the fact that Arwin has made it his own and, you know, spec'd it, modified it the way he wants to. And 
lets us drive his car. I just, I just really love that. So when I started researching the rally art, I couldn't find that much about it. And the strange thing is I found a lot of different types for the zero to 100 kilometers an hour. Uh, I found 7.1, 7.0, uh, 6.2, 6.0, uh, I don't know, the times are all over the place. Uh, we actually managed to do a 5.97. So it, it really isn't slow from zero to 100 kilometers an hour. And it also has a very aggressive launch control. If you want to check that out, uh, go check out the Ultiman POV in the top right corner. But for now, this is it for this review. As I said, Arwen is going to put a bigger turbo on this engine and we will drive it again when it's finished. So stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching. You can subscribe by clicking the big button right there. You can also check out this video or go check out this playlist. See you at the next one. Bye.